Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode we're walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In this episode, we're going to be discussing taxes and how to keep yourself out of trouble with the government. Now, you're probably wondering why I would pull out taxes as its own episode, but here's why. One of the things that small business owners mess up, especially in the beginning, is paying their taxes. They fail to pay them correctly. They fail to set aside a certain percentage of their profits every single month, knowing that they have to pay the government. Yes, none of us like to do this. It hurts. It's painful. But the reality is it's going to happen. So you need to do it correctly from the very beginning. Now, who's the people that are most likely to mess those up besides those that are stubborn? It's going to be people that are coming from an employee mindset, because as an employee, your employer is taking your taxes for you. And let's face it, you've never had to think about it. Sure, you moaned and groaned every payday, but you never had to worry about the money being collected and given to Uncle Sam. However, now that you run your own business, it's a habit you have not built yet. So this is a habit you need to build from day one. And here's the best recommendation that I can give you. And that is to open up a separate bank account away from your normal bank to hold the money you owe for your taxes. And each week, as you do your business, you move money over into the tax fund, or you can do it once a month. It doesn't really matter. But the main thing is you need to transfer money to pay your taxes and put it into this account based off of your profits. Because remember, you pay taxes on your profits. You pay taxes on the money you personally take out. So it's not just your profit line. It's also going to be any money that you have paid yourself as an employee in your business. And by putting it into this other account that's at a different bank, it's going to be less likely that you're going to mess with with it out of sight, out of mind. Because if you log into your phone and you're looking at your accounts and you see one holding all this money, you're going to think that's money that you have to play with. No, it is the government's money. It is not your money. For myself, I personally do this because in the beginning, I too had that mindset challenge. I thought I was saving enough money and I was totally wrong. And I would see that money sitting in my account and think I could spend it. It wasn't until I took the money and put it into a different bank account at a completely different bank that I don't pay attention to it. I look at it once in a blue moon, make sure my transfers are going over there and just to know that it's there safe and sound and nobody has touched it. This way, when I log into my bank accounts, I'm not tempted by that money because it's not mine. So it's really important that you just take some of that money. Now, how much should you take? That's going to be up to you. Everybody's taxes are going to be different. You need to see a tax professional for this particular piece. If you are in the beginning stages of your business and you're not making that much money, it might be 10, 15%, uh, all the way up to 30, 35%. Some people may be 40, but it's going to be after your cost of goods and your expenses. Okay. So it's going to be for any money you pay yourself as an employee, because you're not an actual employee, you're paying yourself like an employee, but you're not an actual employee and all money flows to you and your profits of your business. So you want to keep in mind that that's what you're going to be doing the taxes. And it's really, really important that you have a separate account because you cannot be mixing your personal account with your business account. And you shouldn't be mixing that with your tax account. You never want to mix your personal money with your business money. So let's just say that you make $1,000 after you pay all of your bills. Then your taxes are going to be based off of that $1,000. So you need to determine how much of that $1,000 you need to set aside. Is it going to be 25%? Is it going to be 20%? Is it going to be 15%? Once you've done your first year of business, you'll start to get an idea. And like I said, go see an accountant bookkeeper. They could probably help you out with some of this. Not so much the bookkeeper, but a tax person, they could tell you. But at least try to put 20% if you can get into that habit. Worst case scenario, you have money left over at the end of the year and you've got a head start on that money. And you can just let it save itself up because as your business grows, so are your tax needs going to grow. And at some point you're going to mess it up and not save enough. So by letting that account just grow, you're going to already have some money in there to help you with that. You have to remember the government will not go away. You cannot fall behind with the government. They can come after your house. They can come after your business. They are not going to go into collections and they're going to uh, just all of a sudden give up after seven years. It doesn't work that way with the government. The government is going to get its money. They will win. Do not test them. This is not the group of people that it's not like Visa or somebody that you can screw over. The government's going to get their machine. So it's really important that you just create that habit, put the money set aside and everything's going to be good. 
The main thing to remember is your tax account is not an emergency fund. So don't think of it as an emergency fund. My main thing is when you are in need of stuff or the business needs stuff, you cannot go into this money and take this money. This money is for the business and it's for the government. It's not yours. And you need to make sure that you think of it that way, that it's not your money, you're just holding it. Speaking of which, let's talk about sales tax. Some of you are gonna be required to collect sales tax in your business, especially if you have a brick and mortar business. A lot of service-based businesses don't have to collect sales tax in most of the states, but if you have to collect sales tax in any way, shape or form, that is not your money. You are a holding facility for the government. It was never yours to begin with. So do not pass go, do not touch that money. It is not yours. Immediately transfer it over to the tax account because at the end of the month, you're gonna have to pay the government back their money. So please do not use this. I have watched business owners really get themselves into a bind because they take that extra money they made from sales tax and use it to pay the bills. And then at the end of the month, the government comes knocking for their money and they just don't have it. You got to remember, it was never yours to begin with. Do not mess with the government's money. If you collect sales tax, immediately move it over into this account that is separate so you are not even tempted by it. All right, so a lot of good things here when it comes to taxes. Taxes are a necessary evil. Uh, I understand you don't want to pay it. You can kick, scream, moan, and groan. At the end of the day, you're going to pay it. Do not fall into the trap that a lot of small businesses end up go out of business because they fail to pay their taxes correctly or they start off all of a sudden owing the government I've sat down and talked to business owners that are on payment plans that is they're going to go on forever and they owe so much money and the government will only work with you for so long. So if you can get in the habit of doing this right from the very beginning, I promise you it's going to be well worth you doing it. So open up that separate bank account at a different bank altogether to hold your tax money. Get in the habit. All sales tax goes over there if you collect it and that you're gonna take 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, depending upon how much you do in sales, and you're gonna start shoving it over there every single month off of your profits. So this way you have it when it comes tax time, because there's nothing worse than your accountant looking at you saying you owe $7,000 in taxes, and you're looking at them blankly going, "Uh, I don't have $7,000. Well, you don't have $7,000 because you didn't put $7,000 set aside from those profits. So it is avoidable. You just have to have a plan and implement that plan from the very beginning and make sure you do it every single month. I don't want you to become a statistic. There are enough business owners walking around with that debt on them. I don't want you to be one of them. And if you don't like taxes, you know what? You can always join your city council and fight over it with them. It's your right. But at the end of the day, the government's going to win and they're going to get their taxes. So uh, just do it right from the beginning. I promise you it's going to be the right thing to do. All right. In our next episode, I'm going to talk about sales and I'm going to give you a quick tip that I have found has been very helpful. And when people have implemented it in their business, they find that it really is helpful. So I'm going to make sure that I share that with you in our next episode. And meanwhile, don't forget to get your startup guide that is in the show notes. Check out the Badass Business Owner YouTube channel for even more information. And don't forget to subscribe to the Badass Business Owner podcast for even more tips as you get live. Talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.